you suck. I'm glad you're dead. <laughs> like, I kind of am like, just have an orgy, you know, live your life. Man. I don't think you would think that if you were in England, 1970. I think you'd be Scotland. Okay. Yeah, I mean. I think if you were back, you know, that time, you'd be. I think. With him in terms of your, your properness and your, uh, the Church of England and all I, that. Here's the thing. I think before the big reveal, we learn that it's our understanding that they've probably sacrificed this girl. So mm-hmm. leading up to it, we're at you know uh, I think a few episodes back, John said that uh, thing about they won't forgive you for killing a child. And for most of this film, that's what we see these people as. So they've set up them being unforgivable. You know. It's only at the very end that they kind of do a bait and switch. And it's like, well, then they haven't sacrificed this girl, but they do sacrifice people. And before that, even they hit that whole scene. There's a scene where um, like six guys have two swords each. And yeah. they make this weird sort of uh, oh, yeah, octagon or something. Yeah. And everyone in the town has to put their head through it and hopefully not get their head chopped off. Uh, and it's like musical chairs. When the music stops, they will right. all pull. And then... I don't know, there's a weird scene where they cut off someone's head and it turns out it's a girl with a fake head and I can't, I'm not sure if that was planned. I guess it was. I don't know. Yeah, it was probably her costume head that got cut off. But but for the whole film, it's interesting that he was set up, the cop was set up to react a certain way. So much so, I think back to the scene where he's gotten to his plane and um, my feeling is that he's thinking that they definitely fucked with the controls or something so i'm gonna crash right so then he decides to go back did anyone else get that that he did. yes they messed yeah. with his plane but yeah. they didn't necessarily i think they did i think they did so he couldn't leave yeah see i oh well, they don't really confirm that that's all way. part of the elaborate the super elaborate but i think plan. the same <laughs> way they suck him in to think this about them when really they, they yeah they do have orgies and stuff but they don't they don't sacrifice children uh, they sacrifice virgins that are adults, and I guess, uh, but they kind of sucked us in as an audience in the same way mm-hmm. to to react a certain way, right? Yeah, I think so. Brilliant bastards. <laughs> <laughs> so, John, you said you this it creeped you out, like the premise of it is. Yeah, I think the um the town creeped me out. I mean, there's a he he keeps going into this shop the supposed mother of Rowan and she has um like a two-faced cat in a jar I don't know if anyone saw that Mm-mm. and then she also had a jar that just said foreskins on it yeah. I did notice that <laughs> <laughs> and uh you know her daughter has a sore throat so she makes her hold a toad in her her mouth yeah and all cool that stuff to me was, was very oh the umbilical cord I laughed <laughs> right yeah, yeah um what the headstone I believe one of the headstones said protected by the ejaculation of serpents mm-hmm. yeah all that would just play into the wrote that down too yeah that should be our next band's name protected by the ejaculation no, of serpents. no just ejaculation <laughs> of serpents <laughs> yeah <Out of red>. <laughs> <laughs> I did find the town really creepy but there was all you know but then you're right because at times they're hilariously funny like when they're singing about sex and stuff yeah <laughs> uh, the, yeah i want to party with them you want to go there i don't necessarily none of those guys were attractive but <laughs> are you sure <laughs> i'm um, hopping on the plane to summer isle with lauren and yeah. we're gonna go <laughs> but the, the, have a week of debauchery <laughs> with the villagers go straddle a tombstone yeah yeah <laughs> It's on my bucket list. <laughs> I love the I love the part where um, the police officer is confronting the teacher, and he says, "Have these children never heard of Jesus?" And that's just that that question in and of itself is very funny. But then she comes back with this zinger. She says, "Oh, himself the son of a virgin," yeah. and uh, I thought that was really funny to kind of throw the wackiness of that story back in his face, uh-huh. like that sex is or lack of sex is central to this story as well, you know. And, and yeah. he's kind of like. He's so frustrated that she doesn't just like accept Christianity on its merits, you know. Like he's like so bummed out. What, what do you think about this moment? I wrote it down. Uh, he encounters. Um, I think it's when he comes back from the plane, decides not to fly away, or or he decides he can't trust the plane, and he goes to the missing girl's mother, and he pleads with her kind of one last time, like, "Listen, where's your daughter?" Blah blah blah. 
And uh, she says, you'll simply never understand the true nature of sacrifice. Hmm. Hmm. Chew on mean? that, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what do you mean what we think about that? I don't know. I, to, at the moment, I just thought I could pause the film and think about this for about 15 minutes, you know. Um <laughs> They try and convince, they <laughs> which is a long time yeah. for me, folks. <laughs> they, they at, at the end when he finally realizes he's going to die, he's trying to convince them not to kill him, and they are using his Christianity as a way to try and convince him, like you're going to be the martyr, you're going to play the role that your faith says you should play. Yeah, and I thought that was like a very interesting twist on the whole thing. Um, of course, he doesn't. He realizes in that moment, oh, I don't want to be this martyr, but mm-hmm. uh, I did think that play with it was um was a kind of a cool twist and christopher lee as we talked about is he has been interviewed just glowing about this script and and it seems like a very simple story on the outset but he just goes on and on in one interview i watched about how brilliant this this script was for this movie yeah i've read that he thinks this is like his best role yeah ever which you seem to disagree with josh i don't know i don't know it's not very, uh, as far as acting, it's not much that he does in this film. The but. scariest scene in the movie to me is Christopher Lee leading the parade as the man woman, the man woman. <laughs> yeah. And his makeup is really terrifying. <laughs> like it's so <laughs> creepy. Um, I don't know. Well, I think part of this podcast for me is exploring, uh, our identities as as horror fans, some of us more than others, Lauren. But John, I'm wondering, you picked the fog, you picked this film. Do you see uh, similarities? And in thinking about films that you might want to pick in the future, are you getting a sense of who you are as a fan? Are you? Is there something that you're avoiding? Uh, like I really don't want to pick Hatchet Two or something like that. I definitely don't want to pick Hatchet Two. Not yet. At least. Um, I I think I've said before I really like movies from the 70s that's uh both for um kind of the blockbuster movies of the 70s and some of the more kind of independent films of the 70s I just think it's the golden era and um so I realize that both the movies I've picked are from the 70s I did not like The Fog that much like it was okay oh. I really really did like The Wicker Man um in its sort of its its feel the story the characters, I just thought everything about it was kind of cool. I would watch it again, no problem. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I do like that both of your picks. One, the evil was fog. Okay. And this one is just a giant stick man. That doesn't do yeah. anything. John's villains are lame. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. I, I found the stick man more interesting than Jason <laughs> in the new Friday the 13th. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> I totally thought the Wicker Man was going to be, like, <clears throat> an actual, like, demon thing that the... You're waiting for the horror movie to kick in, basically. Yeah. <laughs> I do remember, Lauren, when we when I announced this movie, or... Was it? At some point, you At to- some point, I told you it. I told you about this, and you said, oh, this is going to be so scary. And I was wondering if you thought the Wicker Man was, like, the Candyman or something. Yeah, like, I did. <laughs> okay. So you thought it was going to be, like, a monster. I'm the Wicker Man. <laughs> Yeah, I think I was a little disappointed. I, I, I guess I'm not. I'm just not worried about like creepy town folk <laughs> killing <okay>. me. <laughs> That's not like something I wake up in okay. the middle of the night sweating about. So yeah, you will now when you go to visit Scotland. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna <laughs> you be mean terrified. England. <laughs> nope. Um, did, no. There's one. There's one I'm just movie saying, we've messed up so many times. <laughs> Stupid Americans. We don't know the difference between England and Scotland. <laughs> There's one movie moment that I think was a, a I made a connection with. I, 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 is, this your, is this your shining light? No, oh. the whole movie's my shining light. But the, no, 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 that is not <laughs> um, the way shining lights work. Go ahead. This uh, this scene I thought of from another movie, and it is the Christmas season. At the end of this, while he's being burned alive in the Wicker Man, they're singing the song "Sing Cuckoo" mm-hmm. and holding hands and kind of back and forth. It reminded me of the end of the Grinch that stole yeah. Christmas when they're singing <laughs> Yahoo Doris. And, um, I, I mean, I, for me, it was like almost the exact same thing. Like I, I kept laughing, like they're so like happy singing the sing cuckoo as he's burning alive. 
Yeah, uh, they're not evil people. They're just they're practicing just their beliefs. I was like, they're saying cuckoo is fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's dark and weird. Uh, so, come on. Shining light, John. Uh, I think the story was a good one. I think the story of sort of his uh, his Christianity and their paganism and how kind of thrown off he is by all of it. Um uh, you know what? I don't know why I'm going on and on. My shining light is Willow in the dance. There you scene. go. It was... <laughs> Slapping her ass. It was unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Like, oh my god. Okay, so as a woman, I'm watching John's that, slapping and I was like, "How this is? Not, this would not work. Like, this is nothing about this is sexy." She's like pounding on the wall. I mean, especially from his, you get to see it as a viewer, but from his perspective, all you hear is sing. You don't even know she's naked. Right. That was the it's funny all, part about it. It's, it's all. Yeah. I mean, it's all stylized. It's all. Kind Kind of like a joke, like yeah. But, Josh is like, no, we realize that it's, it's for us. Bella's it's not for him. <laughs> but like, how is he so like entranced by it? And even seeing it, I'm like, that's not they, entrancing. She see, so she <laughs> says the next morning, hey, last night I invited you into my room for sex. Why don't you come in? Like she puts it out more plainly. So I get the idea that she had at some point said to him, like, come on by for a good time. Well, and then the, they just make it the. Dance, that song was the and dance whole for movie. Let's look at her last two films, uh, both of which nudity plays a prominent role. The, okay, not nudity, female nudity. <laughs> There's nudity, no as I was saying, Lauren. No, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but is it? Do we, is just because this is a a higher brow film that it kind of gets a pass? Do we think? Oh, or Lauren, like, how does the nudity sit with you? Like, uh, any any thoughts on this? Does anyone see where I'm going? Yeah. It seems like the the nudity in, in Friday the 13th is easier to judge maybe because it's with teens rather than like people that are 30 or 20 or whatever. Yeah, uh yeah, I don't know. I think Not teens 18 of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for some reason I think well, A, I think I expect most of these movies to have boobs like female nudity just because it's such a part of the genre so it's like it's kind of tired you know um and in that in that respect i don't even want to especially movies like friday the 13th which are like horribly objectifying um and like purposefully so and you know that like i almost don't want to give them the benefit of me like critiquing it and going on a feminist rant about it because it seems like they're almost asking for it and but it is very uh what's the word like it's like a boys it is such a boys club in the fact that it's like it these movies with the female nudity it's like not meant for me it's mm. meant for male viewers mm. and i think that's why there are fewer women who are into horror movies i don't know the statistics i would guess that i'm not saying i know there are tons of women who are into horror movies but i do think it's skewed slightly higher for men and i think part of that is like the fact that a lot of these women are objectified but i do think in this movie like the women in it the women characters play more of a role and you see them more as a whole a little bit more than friday the 13th um slightly slightly so i'm I'm thinking of two scenes one her dancing against the wall and then friday the 13th where he uh, stabs her through the head and pulls it up Mm -hmm. against on the dock and just was it the same sort of thing for you was just an opportunity to see her naked because as josh said this was for us not for him in the other room uh yeah i mean they're kind of the same i i would say that the killing one is uh if you like dissect it is more upsetting right that like you would want to see it she's being murdered yeah she's being murdered and she's naked Mm -hmm. and like they're showing it sexually um but i think it's both yeah both like you can tell it's from a male director's point of view for male viewers is this our best film yet i would say no well let's i just going back to the nudity aspect go ahead sorry john um the (laughs) Please. The nudity in Wicker Man, yes, from the audience perspective, it is just objectifying women's bodies. But in the story, it is part of their paganism. Right. right? Mm-hmm. That they get naked and go out in the woods and all that stuff. But you, but you never see the men naked. <laughs> if like they're all like, right. we're comfortable with nudity, then why aren't the men naked? Well, in the or orgy, just in the orgy scenes, are, are they not... Men That's men. like five seconds. Yeah, I was gonna say no, I, don't, I, don't I don't recall an orgy scene. More penis. It's like five seconds long. 
Right. Well, there is the, the scene where they're all like all the women are mounted on the men and, on the beach, and right. like one girl has her shirt open, and you can see her <clears> boobs. <throat> they're mostly clothed, but the guys are completely clothed. You can't yeah. see. Anything. You're right, in the, in the sense that this is you know to get teenage boys into the into the audience. Well, or thirty four year old. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to think about this film where who it was for in 1973. Uh, from my 2015 perspective, it seems like a, it seems like this is for my, you know, grandparents or something like that. You know, just because. Because grandma loves boobs. Mm. <laughs> Whoa. Sorry, grandma. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, who is this for? Like, uh, Well, clearly Friday the 13th, um, I think it could be for different people, but I think there are definitely aspects of that film that went after a certain audience. Mm. And, um, I don't know, um, I, I think I feel like Wicker Man is a film like, it's like a higher level, a higher sort of film, like an exorcist or something like that. I mean, Christopher Lee, you know, and obviously the writers were what good writers and, um, they're really making a story, um. I don't. Know, I think. I think a film can be good and shallow at the same time. Um, I just wonder if that nudity is simply that, or if if they feel like it really did contribute to the story. Uh, me personally, or I'm um, in the group. Yeah, Josh. Doc Rope. Um. <sighs> who cares? <laughs> no, this is something that I think about a lot and talk with molly about and i don't know it's hard to um it's hard to come to a conclusion about but i think what you were saying about wicker man being almost like a higher form of art it's more acceptable but i don't know yeah i did feel like the nudity in, nudity in this was more like nudity you would see in a museum <laughs> than like porny, mm-hmm. which is how Friday Thirteenth was. Mm. And uh, yeah, I think I think maybe because like especially the the scene where all the girls are jumping over the bonfire, like it, it reminds me so much of a I think it's a Matisse painting where all the naked women are holding mm-hmm. hands against uh, the blue background. Yeah, like that. In in that respect, I was like, oh, that's kind of pretty. Mm-hmm. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, my shining light for the film would be the animal masks, uh, and the just. I think there's there's an eeriness there that I really dug, yeah. and, and just the whole uh, procession, the lion, <laughs> and everything, and mm-hmm. uh, I don't know. I dug that imagery. Uh, we know John's shining light was the entire film. Um, right, Mine John? obviously is Christopher Lee. Now, what you talked earlier about Christopher Lee and how much you like him. Yeah, he's a badass. <laughs> Give us some he of the so highlights. awesome. Why about yeah, him? I don't want to go on and on about him. I, I, I want to hear you go highlights. on and on about him. Uh, <laughs> he just passed away this year. Uh-huh. I, th- I think he was like 94 or 5, something. High 90s. Good long life. Um, and they found him watching the nude scene from this film. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh yeah so he is he was old enough he was he was part of world war ii um he was part of it he he fought in oh, world okay. war ii um of course he plays the wizard saruman in the lord of the rings films um he was a dracula in uh oh man i don't remember which year that that was that he played dracula um so amazing actor but my favorite thing about Christopher Lee is how much he loves metal. <laughs> <laughs> um, I highly encourage you to go check out um, uh, this band called Rhapsody, who I think they're Italian, maybe. Um, they're kind of a fantasy metal band. And Christopher Lee does sort of these little intro pieces for uh, a couple of their songs. I think he even sings on one of their songs. Well, I recall the video, he like sits in a throne watching them play. That I think that was at a live performance uh-huh. of the band, and he read like a bit of fantasy to the concert crowd. Right. But he went on to start his own 
metal band yep. and sing on albums going under the name Charlemagne, I believe. And, Charlemagne uh, by the Sword and the Cross. Yeah, and so... The, the band's Charlemagne or his name is Charlemagne? It's kind of a concept album. Yeah. Anyways, he was doing this shit when he was in his 90s. Uh-huh. So that's awesome. I hope I'm making metal albums when I'm 92 years old. Well, that's why I love him. Anyways, better start now, Josh. Bing. What was your shining light, Lauren? Do you have one? Um, did she start to say? I don't think did so. she? No. I don't know. Uh, I really did like the Barley song. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe the music is my shining light. Yeah. We should get the soundtrack and listen to I'm it. I'm going to go right now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, good pick, John. Thank you. We done? Oh, shit. Do I have to pick now? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Right? Or is it... Yeah. See, it's confusing. It's I told you. Josh. All right, Josh, you're up. All right. So, um, I decided to go with something fun this time. Mm. Um, <laughs> Just say Hatchet 2. No, it's a movie that I saw in high school once at a friend's house, and uh, I want to see it again. So I, it was hilarious at the time. <laughs> I'm so excited right now. It's called Ice Cream Man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, starring Clint Howard, and it is directed by Paul Norman. Probably don't know who he is because I don't know what he's done either. But uh, this movie, from what I remember, <laughs> is really fun. There's probably going to be a lot of shit to laugh at. Of and course, we know uh, Paul Norman. His most recent film from 2001 is called Sperm Bitches. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Ice Cream Man came out in uh, 1995, so it's it probably a little more toned down than his more recent work. Was... But I'm interested to see if... I can't remember. I know that he kills kids and grinds them up into his ice cream. So I'm wondering <laughs> if we're going to see someone kill a kid on screen. Finally. Finally. That's and funny. I will forgive him just Kate's for being wish. original. All we'll right. see. I don't remember if they actually show that or not. But um, So my exposure to this film is, I think, on some Clint Howard, who, of course, is Ron Howard's brother, Opie from Happy Days. Uh, there's a scene of him in the uh, ice cream truck peeking his head out kind of in a creepy way. Have you seen it? No, no, no. It was, it was, it was some... You just remember a still or there something? There was some uh, award show where they honored Clint Howard, and they showed okay. like, all, every film he's been a bit part in, yeah. and they showed a clip from this. Um, everyone else? How do Have we you guys seen this? it? I've never heard of it. <laughs> Not seen it. Do you know, Lauren, do you know Clint Howard? No. Um, I don't have a lot of good... Clint Howard is... <laughs> <laughs> You've oh seen God. him. Do you know him? No. Were you going to say you don't have a lot of good feelings about Clint Howard? He's, like, brilliant for his little cameos. Like, he's been <laughs> in a lot. He's in all his brother's movies as, like, some little side character. Uh-huh. But as, like, a guy, he's really creepy. <laughs> and uh, the thought of him playing an ice cream man and possibly killing children is uh, upsetting. So we'll see. Like, I mean, my maybe... favorite Clint Howard role was from Rock and Roll High School when he mm. played the guy in the bathroom. Uh, Lauren's shaking her head. I'm showing her pictures. But uh, Clint Howard is a. I mean, I have not. Know? I haven't seen a lot of movies, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a running theme. <laughs> well, that's a wrap. <laughs> right? We're done. If you want. <laughs> you want to plug your website, Josh? No, I don't. Gone. All right. Gone. Bye, everybody. Bye. Till next time. Email us. Gone. Axe Brother Podcast <laughs> at gmail.com. Oh, <laughs>